The time has finally come to make the world's best cinnamon rolls. I feel like I've been teasing this recipe for too long now, but I knew I wanted to do a Kristen's Kitchen episode on these amazing cinnamon rolls. They are genuinely perfection. I've never had a cinnamon roll that comes even close to this recipe. They are just so, so good. Gooey in the middle, crispy outside, cream cheese frosting, just mm. So me and my sister-in-law, Lexi, were looking for the perfect, most delicious cinnamon roll recipe, and we stumbled across this recipe that said Cinnabon cinnamon roll dupe, like make your own Cinnabons at home. And we were like, let's try out this recipe, and we fell in love. We made a few little tweaks here and there, but I, of course, will have the original recipe linked down below because she is a genius, and I'm just so excited to show you guys exactly how to make them. They are a little bit labor-intensive or love-intensive, but they are worth every minute. And if you guys aren't already subscribed to my channel, make sure to subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up if you want to see more Kristen's Kitchen episodes, and let's just begin. Also, I just have to point out that it is only 2.30, and it's already getting dark in my kitchen, and it's making me very sad because usually I just love to use natural light in all of my videos and with daylight savings time, all that stuff, it's really cramping my style, but it will feel like a little evening cozy baking session together so we can embrace the sun setting so early. But now I'm gonna grab all of the ingredients. The first thing we need to do is kind of activate our instant dry yeast. So let's grab it. So I heated up one cup of whole milk to about 115 degrees, and I'm adding that to the bowl of our stand mixer. And then to this, I'm gonna add our instant dry yeast. I just keep mine in a little mason jar in my fridge. It lasts for a really long time. So to our milk, we're gonna add two and a half teaspoons of our yeast. Now I have a third of a cup of butter melted, but not super hot and I'm gonna add that into the milk and yeast. And then we're also gonna add two eggs, which I have sitting out because you need them to be room temperature. Honestly, sometimes I use room temperature, sometimes I just forget and I use cold eggs. So I would say that doesn't matter too much. I'm also gonna add in half of a cup of granulated, oh my, I just poured sugar everywhere. I'm gonna add half of a cup of granulated sugar right into that mixture. And then we're also gonna add a little bit of salt as well. I just got this little salt holder and it's so convenient for baking because it comes, oh, I dropped it. It comes with this little wooden teaspoon. And so when you're baking, you don't really have to grab your measuring spoons because you usually just use a teaspoon of salt anyway in baking recipes. Okay, I actually opened our kitchen door to outside and I feel like it's making it a little bit brighter. So I'm gonna work with this. If you hear some birds chirping, it's cause the door's open. But I moved over to the stand mixer and we're gonna mix these wet ingredients with the beater attachment. And then I'm gonna start adding in the flour and combine that with this. Okay, so we're adding in total four cups of flour just gradually to this mixture. I always think the dough is gonna be way too wet in this recipe, and you might be tempted to add more flour, but trust me, that's why the cinnamon rolls end up so moist, is because the dough is more of like an enriched, moist dough, and trust me, it all comes together. So I'm gonna do the first cup of flour, combine it together a little bit, and then just keep going until we hit the four cups. Here's what we're working with. Now the dough is pretty much combined and you can see it kind of is like a sticky mess, but that's why you just go over here and you get your little spatula and you kind of just, you know, get this out of here. I can't really do it with one hand, one moment. Okay, we're looking for something that looks like this. You can see there's still a tiny bit of flour running through it, and it's mainly all combined. But at this stage, we just don't want it to be over combined. So now at this point, I'm gonna cover this with just like a kitchen towel, let it rest for 10 minutes so that all that flour can soak into the dough, and then we're gonna move on to the next step. 
I realized I had a little brain fart there and I was supposed to be using this attachment when I was mixing up like the dough and the eggs and all that kind of stuff. This is the beater attachment. So if you have this one, use this one for the last step. If not, I don't think it makes a huge difference. But now I have on my dough hook and now we're gonna start really kneading our dough. You can do this with your hands, but since I have the KitchenAid, I'm just gonna use this. And we're actually gonna knead this for about five to seven minutes. If you see that your dough is super, super wet and sticky and just like won't come together into a dough, you need to add like maybe a half a cup at a time until you see the dough really coming together and forming. And I'll see you guys in a bit. This baby has been going for about six minutes and it's definitely formed into a dough. I didn't actually have to add any more flour to it this time. It always just depends. I've added like a whole cup before because it just wasn't coming together. So I think it depends on the temperature outside, a bunch of different factors. So come on, get off of there. Okay, oh my gosh, finally released. Now I have a bowl right here that I've greased with some butter and I'm gonna plop the dough out into the bowl and then we're gonna let this rise for about 30 minutes. Why is it always so tempting to actually like spank your dough like a little butt? I always spank my dough. Do you guys spank your dough? Let me know in the comments. Now I'm gonna be putting some cling wrap around this just so that no air gets in and then dries out our dough. So now I'm gonna stick this in the oven, turned off with the light on, so it's like a warm environment for the dough to rise, and I'm gonna let this rise for 30 minutes, and while we're proofing it, we're going to make our filling and also our icing. So let's go put this baby in the oven. Now it's time to make our cinnamon filling, and for this, we're gonna be using half of a cup of softened butter into a little bowl. We're also gonna add half of a cup of packed brown sugar, which is gonna go right in there as well. We're also gonna be adding two tablespoons of cinnamon to this as well. And we're just gonna mix this all together until it becomes like a thick paste that you can spread. So we're gonna set this aside and we're gonna add this on top of the dough once it's ready to be rolled out. But in the meantime, since the dough still has a while left to prove, we're going to make the icing as well. Making the cream cheese frosting is super, super simple. We're adding six ounces of softened cream cheese and a third of a cup of softened butter into a bowl. I'm using this little pink vintage Pyrex that I found at a thrift store. It makes me very happy. We're gonna beat the cream cheese and the butter until it is combined. Now, you guys know my love of Trader Joe's vanilla bean paste. I add this to almost all of my baking recipes. She adds maple extract to her frosting, but I'm gonna add some vanilla bean paste because it is just too good. Now it's time to sift in our powdered sugar. I have this huge jar of powdered sugar and it's honestly very handy. And the trick here is to make sure you sift in your powdered sugar to your cream cheese and butter mixture. Because if you've ever made cream cheese frosting and it's like all lumpy and just not smooth and perfect, it's probably just because you didn't sift the powdered sugar. So I'm gonna go ahead and put um, a third of a cup in at a time. She calls for two cups of powdered sugar total. I usually lean on the less powdered sugar side just because I don't love super, super sweet cream cheese frosting. I kind of like it to be a little bit more, you know, cream cheesy. I also got this little sifter from the thrift store too, and it's very adorable. You just spin this little handle and the little paddle sifts your sugar for you. I forgot to put on my apron. I told myself, I was like, Kristen, put your apron on before you start baking. I never remember. But anyways, here is the cream cheese frosting all done. So we have 10 minutes left. Let's just check and see how it's looking. Ooh, it definitely has risen quite a bit. And I'm gonna clean up this huge mess that I've made. Honestly, it's not as bad as sometimes, but it's always best to just clean as you go and then you're not left with like a massive disaster. 
So I'm gonna go clean all of this. It's definitely the side of baking that is not so fun to watch. So I'll spare you and I'll see you when the dough is done proving. Here's what the dough looks like. I would definitely say it's doubled in size. It smells so good. I really haven't made bread that much since the accident. Have I even made bread at all? I don't know. But you can see this is what the texture is of the dough. Now, we have a floured surface, but it's right behind you, so let me flip you. And I'm gonna flip the dough right onto the floured surface. Oh my gosh, it's so soft and like a cloud. You gotta spank your dough a little bit because it's what we all wanna do. You're gonna take your rolling pin and we're really just gonna roll this into a big rectangle, but I never really measure it. I just kind of feel it out. Okay, here's what the dough looks like. It's in a rectangle-ish ish shape, but as you can see, not perfect. This is where the cinnamon filling comes in because we're gonna spread it all across our dough. Again, guys, I'm very sorry. I feel like the lighting in this video is a little bit twinky. Camper's barking because I just let him outside to potty. But we're just gonna put this all over and then we're gonna start spreading it out. I usually, actually, now that I come to remember, I usually spread this out with my fingers because I feel like that's the easiest. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Okay, now that the dough is all um, spread with the cinnamon, we're gonna roll it starting at the long end and just tightly roll it into like a long snake. Now I'm gonna take this metal bench scraper. I'm gonna cut off the very tips because these usually don't really have much cinnamon in them anyway. So just cut those off. And then you're gonna kind of measure out your cinnamon rolls. I don't do it, you know, precise, but kind of something like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven rolls, that sounds pretty perfect. Don't be scared if they get a little smushed while you cut them. You can kind of just form them. And then here is the filling. And then you're just gonna set them right into your greased nine by 13 inch pan. And then just cut all the rest. Okay, so here are all of our cinnamon rolls. We're gonna cover these with a kitchen towel once again and let them proof for 20 minutes. And then I will show you the next step because it's a step you wouldn't think would be happening. The time has finally come. They have been proofing for about 20 minutes. Here's what they look like. They've pretty much doubled in size. Now we're gonna take half a cup of heavy cream and pour this all over the cinnamon rolls. You gotta get close for this. This is the best part. So I just make sure I get a little bit on top of each one. This is hard. Oh my gosh, my whole hair is in this. Don't yell at me. It's just me and Mark is going to eat these. But I make sure to get a little bit on top and then just kind of get it all in there. All of this heavy cream is going to soak into the cinnamon rolls while they are baking and just make them so, so moist. I know people hate the word moist, but I don't really hate the word moist. They're going to be moist and fluffy and just amazing. So I'm going to put these in the oven. Those are going to bake for about 20 minutes and we're going to check on them. Mine are a little bit bigger because I did 11, not 12. So they might take a little bit more than 20 minutes, but I will show you what they look like when they're done. Cinnamon rolls are coming out. Yeah, <gasps> Here is what they look like. <laughs> she just looking at You this. think that smells really good, huh, honey? Mm -hmm. Looks so thin. Okay, now we're gonna just let these cool for like 10 minutes. And then we're just gonna spread them with some cream cheese. Why are you laughing? You look funny with those things. So. Now we're gonna spread them with some cream cheese in 10 minutes. Don't be shy with the frosting. No one ever likes shy frosting. And it's nice when they're still a little bit warm to put the frosting on because then, you know, it really seeps in in a good way. Okay, I just really want you to see this texture. You gotta get a middle one. <gasps> Do you see this? 
Do you see the fluffiness? Mm -hmm. <gasps> Look at that. Now that is a perfect thing for me. Mm. See all the cinnamon, the cream cheese, and see how fluffy the cinnamon roll is? It's like one of the best things in the world, to wow. be true. And the frosting is everything. Mm -hmm. Yep. I've made these so many times and they never get old. I just want to show you guys really quick the texture of these up close. Look how soft they are. Look at the bottom. And they're so like flaky and perfect. Okay guys, I think I'm needing to go wash my hands and finish the cinnamon roll. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Oh, camper. No. Don't forget to subscribe. Please make this recipe and tag me in any photos because I'd love to see you guys make them and try them. And we will see you very soon. Bye.